when the feast of the wild boar is spread, Smith and Turner, Aunt Joy and Glasscock, Fox and White Scarver, and all of their comrades will not be unnoticed among the mighty throng. These were after dinner remarks made by John Mosby to more than 150 veterans of the 43rd Battalion Virginia Cavalry on the evening of the first official reunion uh, at Alexandria, Virginia in January 1895. So there you have it. Uh, John Mosby, um, just the name Mosby, well, either for most people who understand anything about the war between the states, war of northern aggression, not a civil war by definition. Anyone who hears that name, Mosby, either has a sense of affection and love and devotion, or just, uh, spite and uh, just wanting to wring the guy's neck. There's no middle ground with this man. I've studied him, studied him for over uh, a decade. And the more I look at this man, the more I see what an amazing character he was. Physically speaking, he was uh, a runt. Uh, if you look at a picture here, I love this photograph. No matter where you go in this room, from one side to the other, his eyes are always following you. That's true. You all over here think he's looking at you, and you all over here think he's looking at you, which is really cool. Uh, most of these five foot seven and 125 pounds soaking wet outside of today's eighth grade. Um, he was, and don't you little five foot seven guys come after me after this is over. Um, he was diminutive. He was frail. He had, I'm going to give you some characteristics about this man uh, before we get into some things here. He was, um, he had been sick during his early years. He was, a uh, little scrawny little kid uh, and had lung problems, chronic lung problems all of his life. Uh, he uh, was confined to bed as a child and uh, uh, there were a couple of doctors brought in who determined that if he lived to age six that would be a miracle. Um, but he did learn to read while he was a child, so sick in bed. And he wrote in his memoirs that his favorite book was the life of Francis Marion, the swamp fox. And um, those of you who saw The Patriot a few years ago with Mel Gibson, which was Hollywood licensed, gone off the charts, um, that was about Francis Marion. What Francis Marion did was he had a little band of Minutemen. And the Minutemen were these guys who were uh, citizen patriot volunteers. Uh, who would keep their powder dry and the balls and muskets and everything ready to go. Uh, maybe keep their, their horses bridled but not saddled. Uh, and if they're out in the field, a man would ride by and say, uh, to horse, we meet at, at uh, the church tomorrow morning, uh, be there. And within a matter of minutes, this man would have grabbed his food and, and uh, uh, unhitched the plow horse and put him away. And, and been mounted up and on his way to the meeting. Francis Marion used these guerrilla tactics to extreme effect against the British in America's War for Independence, where he would have these lightning attacks. They would fire and leave, fire and leave. And the British just couldn't keep up with them. They just, they just they couldn't handle it. It was a whole new way of fighting against the British, and it was very successful. Mosby kept that little kernel of knowledge in his head, and when he was a, a grown man, he used those very same tactics. I'd like to kind of go with you for a few moments to give you some, what I think are some characteristics uh, that Mosby had that made his guerrilla style of warfare so effective. First of all, he was a great horseman, but a lousy soldier. Now, there are those in this room who know what I'm talking about. Uh, there are some people who just don't quite fit into that that mold of uh, uh, column left and column right and, you know, uh, doing all the military rules and following all the orders and everything. Uh, he was at his best. His, his favorite place of all to be was by himself in the woods on a horse at night listening to owls. Now, you take that guy, kind of guy and stick him in a, in a little square and he's not going to fit very well. So. He was a fabulous horseman, and at his 
before he was an incredible intelligence officer. He modeled himself, as I mentioned, after uh, Francis Marion. Uh, he, another thing that he did was he billeted his men in friendly homes. Does that sound familiar? He perfected the term we call today need to know. If you didn't need to know something, then don't ask it. He did his own intelligence gathering. He was, as I said, an incredible intelligence officer. And he always had a couple of good scouts with him who knew the territory really well. And they would go out and he'd look at train schedules. He'd tap into telegraph wires. He would, um, uh, he would grab couriers. Uh, there were things that he would do that, uh, that you, never, you never find out about. These guys, he, he assigned his men into a specific area. Uh, in most of the Confederacy. And, sorry, yes, I did include a map of most of the Confederacy. You can turn your map on. And this, I took this out of uh, John Scott's book, uh, Parts and Life uh, with Mosby. And uh, Mosby defined the area that he would defend as from the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains on the west, uh, the uh, Potomac River on the north and east, and the Rapidan and Rappahannock rivers on the south. And of course, the Rapidan and Rappahannock flow right into Fredericksburg. So if you can get that kind of square in your mind, that's pretty much the area that he operated in. He required his men, when they were not on duty, when they were not being called to duty, to live in an area bounded by the uh, Bull Run Mountains, which are pretty much in the center of this image, uh, on, the, on the east. Uh, you'll see a, uh, a rail line called the Manassas Gap Railroad that cuts from southeast to northwest. Um, that would be on the southern rank. Uh, on the west would be the Blue Ridge Mountains. And on the north would go, if you find Aldi, which is in the, the uh, Bull Run Mountains, and there's a, uh, a line from southeast to northwest that goes up to Snickersville in the mountains. That would be the area where his men were required to be when they were not uh, on patrol. He had two rules, mount and follow me. If you do those, we're going to kill him this time. Uh, so, another one of Mosby's characteristics I think is fascinating is he was audacious. It was his audacity. This guy would do stuff that no, you couldn't imagine. You couldn't imagine yourself doing it. Uh, one of the things he did, I, I just, it's a small story, but I really liked it. Uh, he brought up the two Yankee soldiers one day. Uh, apparently it had been raining, and he 